morning, ladies and gentlemen. Vasil Dikov, Senior Account Manager with GDMFX. I will bring you today's market outlook. We will start with the North American markets and the events from there. We had the ISM manufacturing PMI 0.9, better than expected at 51.3. The ISM price rate was 3.9, better than expected at 63.5. The construction spending month on month was 2.4%. Weaker than expected at minus 1.8%. Manufacturing PMI 0.2% higher than the previous. The RBC manufacturing PMI from Canada 0.1% less than the previous. And we also had the Fed's base book, uh, which showed the modest growth across much of the country. The inflation pressures grew slightly across most of the United States from April to mid May. The, repo the report also pointed to rising labor costs for American companies. The Fed's Beige Book found that labor markets appear to be tightening despite modest job growth. Tighter labor markets appear to be fueling higher wages for entry level and lower skill positions in, the part, in parts of the South, while companies reported more wage pressures for skilled employees in the West and part of the Midwest, according to the report. The Dow Jones moved sideways along with the Nasdaq, which also moved sideways. The Dixie was down to 95.29 from 95.42. Uh, the biggest mover was the US dollar versus the Japanese yen, 120 pips down. Today we're going to have the ADP employment change, the initial jobless claims, and on Friday we're going to have the non-farm payrolls. Moving on to the European markets. We had the Swiss GDP for the year. The first quarter was 0.4%, better than the previous at 0.1% and the GDP for the quarter was 0.3 better than the previous at 0.1%. The retail sales from Switzerland on a yearly basis was 0.3% weaker than expected at 1.9%. Uh, the German market manufacturing PMI for May was 0.3% weaker than expected at 52.1%. The uh, French manufacturing PMI was 1.1% better than expected at 48.8%. The Italian manufacturing PMI was 0.6% weaker worse than expected at 52.4 and the European manufacturing PMI was 51.5 in general. The largest bank in the Euro region earned less from lending the first quarter as the European Central Bank's experiment with negative interest rates compounded the pain of, trading, of the trading slump and rising regulatory costs. A drop in the net income uh, the first in the two years may worsen after the ECB lowered its deposit rate to a minus 0.4% in March, meaning it's char charging lenders more to hold their excess cash. The central bank's next rate decision will be announced today, the 2nd of June, and the economist predict policy will remain unchanged. The euro faces upside risk heading into the European central bank rate decision on Thursday with President Mario Draghi and his fellow officials expected to keep monetary policy unchanged, analysts say. The common currency will be driven mostly by expectations for the Federal Reserve's next policy step, spurring greater scrutiny on U.S. non-farm payrolls data due a day after the ECB's decision. Also, Greece is close to an accord with the creditor institutions on measure needed to get its next bailout trench. Two people familiar with the negotiations said, as the government submitted amendments to Parliament, to Parliament Wednesday to bring legislation in line with the EU area nations requested. The biggest mover was the euro versus the US dollar, 52 points up, uh, pips up and a range of 80. Moving on to the UK, the manufacturing PMI was 0.5% better than expected at 50.1. The mortgage approvals, approvals were 1.75 thousand better than expected at 66.25 thousand. The consumer credit was 330 million weaker than expected at 1.2. 287 billion. The sterling extended its loss after a mixed basket of economic data was released yesterday, with consumer credit and net lending to individuals showing poor than expected figures, and the pound continued its slide from Tuesday after a polling data placed the Brexit leave campaign ahead on Tuesday. The FTSE 100 closed at 6,192 yesterday. The pound was broadly uh, lower against most of its major pairs, 240 pips down versus the yen, 135 pips down versus the Aussie, 205 pips down versus the Kiwi, and 130 pips down versus the Swiss franc. Today we are going to be having the PMI data on the, in the construction field. Moving on to Asia, we had the foreign investments in Japanese stocks which showed a capital outflow of 216 billion yen, negative difference from the previous week, which was at minus 175.3 billion yen. The foreign investments in uh, cap, the foreign bond investments also showed a capital outflow with 123 
0.4 billion yen at 549.4 billion yen. Jap Japanese stocks fell by the most in a month and the yen strengthened after Prime Minister Shinzo Abe held back a widely expected fiscal stimulus package. Oil retreated and the euro rose before Vienna's meeting of OPEC and the European Central Bank. The Nikkei was 260 uh, points down, more than 200 down today. The biggest mover was the US dollar versus Japanese yen, 115 pips down. In the Pacific, from Australia, retail sales seasonally adjusted for the month was 0.1% weaker than expected at 0.2% and the trade balance was 401,000 better than expected at minus 1.579 million. The imports were 2% weaker than expected at minus 1, the exports were 3% weaker than expected at 1%. And moving on to the commodity section of the market, the API weekly crude oil stock report showed an unexpected build of 2.35 million barrels in a crude oil, well of the 3.1 million barrels decline seen. Crude prices initially fell sharply on Wednesday after Russian energy officials abandoned plans to take part in the comprehensive OPEC non-OPEC production freeze that has been in the works since the middle of February. At the time, global oil prices slumped near multi-year lows weighing on the economies of major oil production states such as Russia, Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, Nigeria and a host of others. Separately, Russia announced that it will not send representatives on Thursday's semi-annual OPEC meeting in Vienna. Gold futures inched higher in North American trade on Wednesday as the US dollar pulled back from a two-month high against the basket of major currencies and the US natural gas futures rallied for a third trade session on Wednesday climbing to a five-month high as forecast for the first two weeks of June pointed to intense heat boosting near-term demand expectations. The S&P 500 index had a range of 16 points at 2,091 right now, gold had a range of $15 at 1,214, silver had a range of $0.28 cents at $15.98 right now, crude oil had a $1.15 range at 48.90 right now, and natural gas is trading at $2.37 at the moment with a range of $0.10. Cents. Today is going to be the open meeting in Vienna, crude oil stocks change and the natural, natural gas stores change, and on Friday we're going to have the Baker Hughes oil recount. That was all for me, thank you and have a nice day.